my name is Dee. Hi, I'm Alina Bang. We are part of the St. Paul Neighborhood Network where we create community through media and through the eyes of people. And this summer we were able to create a documentary on how to spread LGBTQ rights through media. During our projects, we interview people from different organizations such as KFAI, a community radio, where it introduced us to Fresh Fruit. Fresh Fruit is a LGBTQ radio. Hi, I'm Leah Honsky. I'm the station manager here at KFAI Community Radio on the West Bank in Minneapolis. What is KFAI? It's a media that's not influenced by big corporations. We aren't owned by anybody who owns anything else. We are a nonprofit radio station that exists here to give a voice to people and to communities who may not be represented in traditional mainstream media. For example, we host foreign language programs for many new American communities on our airwaves. We also host some pretty quirky music shows that appeal to very select demographics of people where you would not be able to find any of those music selections being played on any traditional commercial for-profit radio station. We also have opportunities for people to come in and actually be program hosts or to read news reports or weather updates. We give people a chance to use radio to communicate and to share their ideas. Hey Twin Cities, my name is Quinn Villa Gomez, aka Shimmer, and I'm live right here at KFEI Studios, 90.3 FM in Minneapolis and 106.7 in St. Paul, Radio Without Boundaries. I'm an on-air hostess. I co-host alongside Roxanne Anderson every second Thursday of the month right here at KFEI on a program called Fresh Fruit and Rare Productions. Our show focuses on QPOC issues and the LGBT community, and it's shamazing. Fresh Fruit is one of our, I'm going to say my favorite programs here on KFAI. And it is very, very important because with Fresh Fruit and Rare Productions being one of the longest running queer radio shows in the whole United States. I want to make sure that it's being represented right here in the Twin Cities as well as across the country. It's also important because we want to make sure that queer issues and trans issues are being heard across the nation and making sure that artists in the LGBT community as well as the trans community are being represented to the fullest. We really try to cover youth topics. We try to cover elder topics. We also want to, um, we also cover different um, cultural communities and different events going on. You know, we're, we try to be responsive to what's going on in the community as well. A big issue that's going on in today's country with police brutality and making sure that, you know, those issues are being addressed. We're having a lot of issues where people of color, especially a high rate of, of, of African American men and women are being murdered every day by the police. And it's really sad and it's heartbreaking that a person of color is being murdered because of the color of their skin. But not only that, we want to make sure that Black Lives Matter is being represented to the fullest. It's a very important topic in our community as well as um, Black Lives Matter within the queer community. It's a very important topic. And we also want to make sure that issues in the transgender community with you know, being accepted of, of who you are, um, and it shouldn't really be about your gender and your sexual orientation. We want to make sure that those topics are being talked about on Fresh Fruit and Rare Productions. After learning about Fresh Fruit and what Fresh Fruit does for the LGBT community, we decided to interview Simone Williams, who helped coordinate a film festival up and out, hosted by Intermedia Arts. My name is Simone Williams. I use they, them pronouns. I am an artist, activist, organizer, educator, actor, director, person, and I also really like to knit. Intermedia Arts, for me, is where youth voices are empowered, where people of color are empowered, where trans and queer folks are empowered and the art-based work that is done is creating change within the community. It's via art that talks about gender, that talks about all of these identities that intersect and all of these people who have often been rendered invisible and giving them a voice and giving them a stage or a gallery space or a night to perform their dance or whatever it is that comes out of them and let that breathe and let that live and give it the time of day. After hearing more about the LGBTQ festivals, we wanted to learn more about LGBTQ rights. And so we interviewed Meg Brown, who used to work with SPNN, also makes art for the LGBTQ community. 
Uh, my name is Meg Brown, and I am a queer artist and filmmaker. Just in the last five years, started very much just dedicating my artwork to the queer community. When I started, when I started thinking about doing this, I was a little bit scared that you know I wasn't going to make it as an artist by opening up by saying this is who I am. Um, and these are the only pieces that I'm going to make. I'm going to make these things that say powerful words like queer. Queer was always a derogatory term, a term that was thrown in our faces as a means to make the person saying these words feel bigger and better um, and make us feel smaller. And I'm using these in my artwork as a way to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm queer. So, <laughs> so what? Some of the issues that are not being talked about in the LGBT community and the transgender community is transgender women and men of color being murdered at a high rate. Every day that you go onto social media, whether it's Facebook or Yahoo, you're seeing stories of trans women and men being murdered because of who they are and their gender identity. And those are issues that are not being addressed fully. I also think that when an issue is brought up with a transgender woman or man being murdered, it's we're being classified as we're sex workers and that's not really the case. A lot of trans issues um, and gender um, queer issues, the bathroom thing is, you know, getting played to death, um, but it's a huge issue and nobody should be able to, to, to have laws. I mean, these are actual laws that people are trying to pass that say, I can't do this thing. And, but you can, but I can't. I don't want us to be defined by our struggles, and I don't want us to be defined by our lack of rights, and I don't want us to be defined by our oppression. It's crazy that we're in 2016 right now, and LGBTQIA people are not having the same, same rights. I mean, it's coming, and slowly legislation is Making, um, making laws that maybe help protect us or um, include us, but it seems ridiculous that that's even a conversation. You know, we're we're people. <laughs> it's weird that um, that it's just now happening, and I'm excited that it is. Um, but it it should have happened a long time. I think that we still have a lot of work to do in the country today, but I think that if we come together as a community and as a country, especially right here in the Twin Cities community, that we can make this stuff happen if there's just a lot of support and love. I think that we've made a lot of progress. Like if I was the person I am now 50 years ago, things would look very differently. If I was the person I am now 10 years ago, things would look very different. Um, and I want to see the progress continue and I want to see I want to be a part of that progress and I guess I would just like the media to start recognizing that um, that we're here and we're clear